Number 10, a frozen bird. Back in 2018, an extremely well-preserved bird was found in northeastern Siberia. This is fascinating. It was found near the village of Baleagora, and the bird itself was quite hidden, which explains its incredible preservation. It was found 150 meters into an ice tunnel, and the fascinating thing here, other than, of course, the, you know, mummified bird, is that it looks like it died maybe a week ago, maybe two. If I found this, I wouldn't look twice, to be honest. I would be like, ooh, I'm gonna walk the other way. It's just a dead bird. It looks like a normal dead bird. Thing is, this bird froze 48,000 years ago. Yeah. Studying the Birdo's DNA has given researchers insight on the end of the last ice age, so. Yeah, he's bringing some science, bringing some facts out of his, you know, frozen corpse. Number nine, preserved wolf pup. When this little lady went into the ice 57,000 years ago, I bet she had no idea she would ever see the sunlight ever again. Discovered in Yukon, Canada. What's up? Zur is the most complete wolf mummy that has ever been found period. Not bad. Not bad, Canada. Okay, I see you. She's incredibly intact. She was discovered in 2016 by a gold miner while they were blasting water at frozen mud. What a job that ought to be, eh? Just pff, blasting out history. They thought it was treasure, but really it was just this little lady instead, which in my opinion, still treasure. She's still a treasured, valued soul. She's quite old to us, but when she went into the ice, x-ray tells us she was only six weeks old. She was just a little, pff, little baby, a little bubble. X-rays showed that she also loved fish, so... She had an appetite as well before, you know, life happened. Number eight, surgeon notebook. Whenever explorers find notebooks, I'm so interested, right? It's like history, written private history, just tucked away. It's fascinating. Maybe I've played too much Zelda, I don't know. But notebooks feel very, I don't know, national treasure to me. You know what I'm saying? Hold it up to the light, see if it like, you know, I like secrets. This notebook here once belonged to a surgeon. Now it's well over 100 years old. It was found in a frozen hut in Antarctica and the owner was George Levick. He was a photographer and a surgeon, doubled as both, nice, fancy. And he traveled with the last expedition of Robert Scott. This was from 1910 to 1913. The book itself was completely frozen and the bindings were toast, obviously. But the parts that they can read today is pretty historical. You can still read descriptions of photos George took at Cape Adair. Descriptions of photos, that's, you know, it's not the actual photo, but it's close enough. Imagine in a hundred years you find a notebook and it's mine. Just a bunch of cool S's. You know, those like triangle of cool S's. I'm gonna draw one right now. In our number seven spot today, we have Arctic hyenas. Changing it up a bit to ancient remains. Only a few years ago, scientists discovered teeth. Ancient teeth from Arctic hyenas. When you think of hyenas, you wouldn't ever imagine that they once roamed over Europe and Asia, but five million years ago, that was normal everyday life for these bad boys. Remains of these Arctic beasts have been found mainly in the Yukon permafrost. Evolutionary biologist Jack Zhang studies prehistoric carnivores, and he knew within minutes that these recent Yukon molars belonged to Arctic hyenas, aka Chasmaporthets. We'll go with that. In our number four spot today, we have Mohenjo Daro. This is a location whose name is said to roughly translate to, quote, Mound of the Dead Men. This is one of the world's oldest urban settlements as it was found and built somewhere around 2600 to 2500 BC in what is now Pakistan, but it was abandoned in the 19th century BC as the civilization that called this place home declined. For almost 4,000 years, this site was seemingly forgotten about and the remains of it were undocumented until an office of the Archaeological Survey of India, R.D. Banerjee visited the site in 1920 and found a flint scraper which convinced him of the site's history. From here, excavations of the site began and as of the 1980s, it was named a World Heritage Site. Number three, Grasshopper Glacier. Okay, time to get into a little bit of the gross, shall we? So, you know, wouldn't be a Taylor McWaters list if there weren't bugs in it. Yeah, if you're not a fan of bugs, you can go ahead and skip this one. I'm not gonna take it personally. I'll save my jokes for the next one. A glacier in Montana is home to many grasshoppers and locusts. Yeah, frozen locusts. That's a fun word to say. Yeah, imagine heading to a glacier and you forget bug spray. Yeah, what a fool. You didn't think? Appropriately named Grasshopper Glacier, nice, the mile-long glacier near Crook City holds the remains of extinct grasshoppers. A lot of a lot of remains of grasshoppers. These poor guys were traveling to find new life and they must have got caught up in a blizzard or two. Now they're stuck here for another few hundred thousand years or so. This reminds me of those suckers that have like a gross bug in the center. You know, like those like popsicles that have like a scorpion inside and you're like, oh, interesting. Who buys those? No one buys those, right? Number two, Western camel bones. Scientific name being Camelops hesternus, meaning yesterday's camel in Latin. These bones first appeared in 2008 when gold miners were working in Hunter Creek, just 60 miles away from the Alaskan border. When they stumbled across 
these fabulous bones. What a weird sentence to say. These fabulous bones. Someone walks in, I'm like, it's animals. The last time these bones were operating, you know, on living meat, was 75 to 125,000 years ago. The remains were in such great condition because of the awful surrounding ones. It was so cold that scientists could actually extract DNA still. DNA that told us that 10 million years ago, roughly, Western camels split from modern day camels. Long time ago, they were just like, you know what? No, how about that? And finally, number one, Antarctica Pyramid. I talk about the pyramids of Egypt a lot, so I gotta mix it up a little bit, right? Once I heard about pyramids in Antarctica, I knew what was going on, right? Aliens, confirmed, pretty much. Save the best for last. Back in 2016, a mountain in Antarctica was trending online, and we all immediately thought it was evidence of an ancient civilization because, well, that's what we wanna see, right? That's what we're waiting for. Eric Rignot, a professor at the University of California, reached out to live science when this was all unfolding in real time, adding that, quote, pyramid shapes are not impossible. Many peaks partially look like pyramids, but they only have one or two faces like that. Rarely four. So this one has four, I don't know. Aliens, frozen aliens, just a coincidence, who knows? I like to finish on a who knows. Number 10. Inca mummies. Right off the hop, we got a three in one. Buckle up, folks. March 16th, 1999, right near the summit of Lilialaico, so around 7,000 meters up in the sky near Argentina and Chile borders. Right all the way up there, ancient history, it appears it was just waiting frozen in the cold. It was waiting in the form of three Inca mummies. Further studies found that they were most likely sacrificed in the name of some sort of religious Inca ritual around the year 1500 CE. It's quite a long time ago. They were found in a small opening less than two meters under the ground. Now again, this discovery was shocking. They looked like they were just asleep. That's what being frozen does to you. It makes your body look nice and fresh all the time. But in reality, they'd passed around you know, the 1500s. They're some of the most well-preserved mummies in the world. They now rest at an exhibition in the Museum of High Altitude Archaeology in Salta, Argentina. So if you're ever in Salta, there you go. Number nine, giant beaver skull. Big beavers, you say? All right, hit that thumbs up. So the Yukon permafrost, it seems to be a hot spot of sorts as it should be. Lots of ancient animals just got stuck in time and, of course, in great condition, lucky for us. Scientific name for giant beavers back then was Castoroids ohinus. The giant beaver was on average larger than humans. As Jurassic Park as this thing looks, it only ate pond weeds. It was a gentle giant. He was a fan of the salads, it seems. Hold the beef. You would think otherwise looking at it. It looks like a monster. One of the largest rodents in history, rather. They were probably really cute. I'm not gonna lie, they look kinda nice, at least on Google. 50,000 years ago, they didn't chop down trees, just weeds. It's kinda nice. Smaller beavers outlived them once conditions warmed up. Like others on this list, they moved north. They followed the ideal conditions and that led them ultimately to their icy demise. That is, well, more often than not, the Yukon permafrost. Number seven, million year old plant. Back in 2019 in Greenland, a preserved fossil of a million year old plant was discovered. And it looks a little nice. It was tucked away under the ice near a secret Cold War military camp. An ancient flower was found at a Cold War military camp. What a headline that is. Look, that's a message. That's definitely a message. In 1959, Project Ice Worm was underway. I've mentioned this before, I'm sure, on this channel. And that in itself is a pretty bizarre frozen feature in history. Now, eventually, said project was scrapped and it was abandoned fully. But cut to 2019, it was rediscovered. Scientists at the University of Vermont found parts of a million year old plant just lying around, which is honestly not what they expected to find under a secret Cold War base, you know? They're like, oh, that's actually quite lovely and not haunting and military. Nice. We love that. The fragments were so well preserved that it looked like it died recently, you know? Not a million years old. This would make for a great corsage. If you're going to prom and you're Captain America, this would be kind of fitting. Shout out to Captain America. He always comments on our videos. You're an OG. Studying these plants also can provide us clues on our future and where our current plants might end up. Frozen and lo lost to history, apparently. Can't wait. Number six, frozen treasure. As far as frozen treasure goes, this is very recent. We don't find these often. Treasure frozen in ice. This sounds like something from Ocarina of Time. Again, I wanna like throw a heat arrow at it and watch it melt. What's inside? Let's do it. Back in 2013, an anonymous mountain climber, can't imagine why they chose to stay hidden, they stumbled across this box. This box filled with jewels that was just jammed in the ice. Yeah, they had to breathe on it a bit, melt it up, but alas, once reported to the French officers, this box contained around 100 
precious gems. This was quite the find. Emeralds, sapphires, rupees. This thing was worth at least $300,000 US, roughly. If I had a 20 on the ground, that's it. I'm calling in sick. I'm rich. I won the lottery. So where did this treasure come from? Well, since it was discovered on Mount Blanc, officials were able to trace the lost gems back to an Air India flight that sadly crashed on the mountain back in 1966. Of course, the lives of 117 passengers were lost, and because of the conditions, it's been next to impossible to recover anything from the mountain, especially that long ago, right? It's buried. Somehow, these family gems were able to see the light again. And yes, the owner did return the gems. Only two families claimed the goods, so, you know. They gotta fight it out, I guess. Interestingly enough, in 2014, a French treasure hunter, Daniel Roche, found 50 more pieces of jewelry from the same glacier, so. I don't know, start licking that ice. You might find some diamonds, who knows. How many licks does it take to get rich? Start <sighs> breathing on it, pull out a five. I'm like, yes, it's worth it. Number four, the glacier girl. Okay, before you get worried, this next one here is a plane, not a frozen woman, so. You can resume your calmness. A P-23 aircraft was discovered in Greenland, surrounded, of course, frozen in ice. Who would have thought? During World War II, July 1942, six P-38 fighter planes were ordered to make an emergency landing in Greenland due to lousy weather conditions, and of course, therefore, low visibility. The crew was saved, but the Lockheed had to be abandoned, never to be seen again for 50 years. It was then dug out of 264 feet of snow and ice. It took years to get this plane back up, and she's now known as the Glacier Girl. And in 2007, Lewis Energy CEO Rodney Lewis bought the plane just because he, you know, he just wanted it. Wanted a plane, wanted a frozen glacier gal. Number two, Blood Red Waterfall. We've all seen that video or photo of the waterfall that's underwater. It's a nice little optical illusion. It looks kind of scary. You never want to swim again after seeing that. The Blood Red Waterfall is a little more jarring. On the southern side of our planet, there's a waterfall in Antarctica that is blood red. It is haunting to look at. I, I don't ever want to see this in person or on the internet again, for that matter. The edge of Taylor Glacier, great name for a glacier, my God. This is a one of a kind waterfall that pours into Lake Bonnie. So millions of years ago, when sea levels rose up, glaciers naturally formed at the top of the lake. So this melting water that's slowly leaking out from a quarter mile deep, this water is now three times saltier and three times as scary to look at. When the iron rich water then reached the air, it looked bloody. I mean, more than fair. Just seeing photos of this, it's, it's jarring. It looks like there's a lot of healthy iron pouring out of there. Number one, fish eat fish. This one's kind of funny, you know, funny timing. We gotta finish on a nice, is that a real photo? We gotta finish on one of those. If you know anything about me, it's that I'm not a fan of lakes or oceans or anything underwater, I'm good. Land, beaches, plains. Perfect, let's do that. This video went viral not too long ago and it is very real. These two brothers were fishing on Indiana's Wawasee Lake and they saw a pike eating a bass. Only both parties were completely still because they were both already dead and both completely frozen. Mid meal, this guy's got a fish in his mouth, frozen in time. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity. We found this, this is a real thing. They posted the original photo and nobody believed that it was real. So they had to follow up and post the video where they actually remove it from the ice. So totally official. I would also think this is fake too. It looks like a meme that you'll have in the back of a class where it's like, hey, always a bigger fish, don't give up. Or something weird like that. Like Will Smith with a thumbs up next to like a glacier. You're like, is this motivation? I don't know, this is weird. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have Carol. An American history professor named Paul Kosuk was absolutely fascinated by ancient settlements, like I'm sure a lot of us are. But this passion led to him devoting much of his time to studying in Peru, which has such an incredibly rich history. In 1948, while in Peru, Paul made the discovery he had been waiting for when he came across the dry remains of an ancient city. The remains were carbon dated and placed to be about 5,000 years old. The city of Carroll was once the home to around 3,000 inhabitants pre-Inca, and this was already a thriving location while the pyramids were being built. That is how old the settlement is. It appeared to be quite a peaceful place as there were no obvious signs of battles or weapons, but among the remains were homes, plazas, temples, and even an amphitheater. It is said that the city was abandoned in 2000 BC, and in 2009 AD, it was made a World Heritage Site. In our number 9 spot, today we have Iram of the Pillars. This place is also known as Atlantis of the Sands and it is a lost city or area that is spoken of in the Quran. In the Quran it is said to be a place that is full of lofty buildings and it was populated by a group known as Ad. This group had turned away from Allah so the prophet Hud was sent to summon them back. The people did not
not listen or obey, and as a result, it is said that they were punished with a sandstorm being sent to the area for seven days and seven nights. In the end, the city is said to have vanished beneath the sands as if it never even existed. In the 1990s, a team, which was led by Nicholas Clapp, who is an amateur archaeologist and filmmaker, announced that they had found this lost city. It is said that this was done using NASA's remote sensing satellites, ground penetrating radar, and images taken by the Space Shuttle Challenger. These tools gave them the opportunity to see old camel trade routes and where they all once converged. This point is a well known area, and once excavated, it is said to have revealed the area known as Irem of the Pillars. In our number eight spot today, we have Heracleone, also known as Thonis to the Egyptians. This was an ancient city that was located near the mouth of the Nile River. Greek legend says that this was the city where Hercules took his first steps into Africa, as well as the place where Paris hid Helen before the Trojan War began. This is all to say that, to legend, the city was super important. But aside from legend, no one knew where this place was or how to find it. Well, just over 2,000 years ago, it turns out that either an earthquake, a tsunami, or a combination of the two hit the city and submerged it underwater. It used to be believed that Thonis and Heracleon were two separate places and that they were both located on what is now Egyptian mainland, but neither of those things turned out to be true. In reality, in 1999, after five years of searching, archaeologist Frank Gaudio located the ruins of the city underwater as they had been submerged in the ocean. Since then, excavations and explorations of the ancient city have taken place, and it was stocked full of some incredibly cool treasures from thousands of years ago. In 2010, a type of ancient Nile River boat was found here, and even not too long ago, in August of 2021, it was announced that wicker baskets that contained fruits of the doom palm tree, as well as grape seeds that date back to the earliest 4th century BC, had been found among the ruins. Number six, Grasshopper Glacier. Yeah, if you aren't a fan of bugs, you can go ahead and skip to number five. I will not take it personally. Just hit the thumbs up at least, you know? Do something. A glacier in Montana is home to thousands, millions, I don't even want to know how many. Grasshoppers and locusts. Just all stuck in time right here. Yeah, imagine heading to a glacier and you forget bug spray? Huh, what an idiot. Well, appropriately named Grasshopper Glacier, this mile-long glacier near Croke City holds the remains of extinct giant grasshoppers. Yeah, they're, they're dead and frozen and gone, but you can still see them, which is not great. These poor guys were traveling to find new life a long time ago, and they must have gotten caught up in some cold winds, and now they're stuck here for another few hundred years. This reminds me of those suckers that have the little insect inside. Who actually buys those, you know what I mean? You see them in gift shops a lot, scorpion inside, like, mmm, nice. One lick and I'm done. In our number three spot today, we have Wolverine Fish. Hugh Jackman, if you're watching, this one's for you. This year alone, there have been over 212 discoveries of brand new freshwater fish. We love a new fish. That's super exciting. One of which is the X-Men inspired Hopalin Cistrus Wolverine. These fish have strong lateral curved spikes called odontos tucked under their gills. They can extend and jab their prey with prongs, Hence why the name Wolverine is added to the fish's name. It's kind of cute, it has the claws, which is terrifying, sure, but he's okay. I do kind of love him. In our number one spot today, we have Ice Age art. Well, to end off this list, we have some ancient artwork. This Ice Age masterpiece was painted in the Colombian Amazon. The thing is, unlike other drawings found on the ceilings of tombs, this canvas stretches about eight miles. It's incredibly long for an ancient painting, and for a modern painting, now that I think of it. These drawings date back to 12,000 years ago, near the end of the last ice age. These were found in 2018, but it was only last year when they went public with the findings. The findings being paintings of elephants, giant sloths, horses, snakes, birds, and deer. This is now one of the largest collections of rock art in South America. Yeah.